Hey guys, it's Jason, and today I'm going to be discussing my thoughts about the new PlayStation 5. Let's talk about design. When the PS5 was first revealed, I thought it looked terrible. But as with most new designs, it grew on me. It stands out and you really do notice its presence in your setup. But design is subjective and the point of a gaming console is gaming. So let's talk about performance. It can run most games at 4K 60fps and even some games at 4K 120fps. The loading times are insanely fast on this SSD and it surprises me every time I boot up the system and load into Spider-Man in around a minute. This console is also capable of ray tracing, which is cool for games that support it, but what's the point of having this insane machine when there aren't that many games that are released yet? Which leads me to my main message and biggest concern for those looking to get a PS5 right now. I can count the number of games that are released on the PS5 with my hands. The notable exclusives out right now are Astro's Playroom, that's one, Spider-Man, Demon Souls, and Sackboy, Big Adventure, I think that's what it's called. So when looking at just the exclusives out for the PS5, there aren't that many. Which is why I think going out there to buy a PS5 for absurdly scalp prices is not worth it. The best game, in my opinion, that is out for the PS5 right now is actually the free one that comes with the PS5, and that's Astro's Playroom. This game takes full advantage of the controller's features such as the microphone, the vibration, the adaptive triggers, and the touchpad. Sure, the graphical performance is really good on the PS5 and is very next-gen, but the controller is what you use to interact with the whole console. So I think the controller plays a huge role in moving towards the next generation of consoles. Also, side note, NBA 2K's vibration sucks. You can never predict when it vibrates, and the triggers are just not it. So I completely turn it off, which goes to show that developers also need time to really take advantage of these controllers and make it work well with their games. The main message I wanted to convey today is that don't feel rushed to go out there and get a PS5. If you're able to find one for retail, sure, go for it. The PS5 looks really cool and it can run games at really high resolutions and high frame rates, but the game selection is just not fully developed yet. There are some dope games that I'm personally really excited for, such as Gran Turismo 7 and Ratchet and Clank. The game selection can only grow from here on out. From online articles, the PS5 sold 3.4 million units as of 2020, and they're expecting to sell 18 million by the end of 2021. So supply is going to increase along with the selection of games, which is great news. So yeah, that's it for this review. Again, don't feel rushed to go out there and buy a PS5 for scalp prices, but if you find one for retail, pick one up. Thanks for watching, I'll see y'all in the next one.